Hey guys, hi, how are you? It's been six months since I bought this 2007 Acura TSX with over 200,000 miles. I actually replaced a Tesla Model Y performance with this car. What a great idea, right? Well, today I bring you a full report and everything I spent on this endless money pit for the last six months. Those of you that watched my original videos should remember that I paid $4,500 for this car, which sounded like a steal at the time, depending on who you ask. But since then, I've spent a lot of money fixing issues associated with such an old car. Yes, it's an Acura, and yes, Honda vehicles seem to be able to run forever, but with over 200,000 miles, any vehicle will have issues associated with such an old car that require to be addressed if you want the car to continue to be reliable. When I bought it, it had 217,000 miles, and right now it has 227,000 miles. But first of all, I must admit that some of the money that I spent, it was for personal reasons, just aesthetic issues that I had with the car, and some of the money was spent unnecessarily because I failed to diagnose the car properly, so I spent money on parts that were not needed. And as always, for those of you that don't want to stick around for the duration of the video, I'll tell you right now how much I spent on this car. It was $8,939 on a car that originally cost me $4,500. So in this video, hopefully you get an idea of what it's like to drive a car with a lot of miles. Let's go over these expenses. The very first thing I did was obviously register it for it. In California, you must have the car smogged every time it changes owners. And for that, I paid $60. The seller is responsible to do it, but part of the deal was that I will take care of it. Secondly, I had to register it. In California, a big chunk of money that goes when you pay registration goes to paying sales tax. So at $4,500, it wasn't much. It set me back only about $55. I also ordered personalized plates for it, and I'll show you later when I get them. That was $51. The first big expense was the tires because the old ones had some thread but they were cracked. Typical tires that have been sitting for a long time under the sunlight. So I bought this from Costco, they were $830. Moving on to the to under the hood, the car maybe two or three weeks into my ownership it started having issues not starting so I figured it was an old battery and I paid $122 for this battery that turned out not to be the issue and without proper diagnosis I moved on to replace the alternator that what was it maybe um 253 and uh, i bought it from autozone that wasn't the issue either what turned out to be the problem was the starter and the reason why i had to have it professionally installed is because to have it replaced you need to remove the intake manifold and that seemed like a lot of work and i just paid a mechanic 300 dollars to do it so combined that was over 600 dollars. and then since i bought the car it had like a loud power steering pump and um, I had to replace it. I tried changing the O-rings myself, but that didn't take care of the issue. We had a very small leak right here. Can you see it down there? So I just paid somebody to do it for me for $300. So that was over $600 in parts and labor. And uh, since, that, since then it was running smooth and then lately the power steering turned very, very hard in the last couple of nights. And I just found another leak somewhere underneath there. My wife hit a pothole recently coming from work and it might've broken something, a line or something. So that looks expensive and I'm gonna take it to the mechanic on Monday. The biggest expense to date is replacing this headlights uh, the original ones were faded and they look made the car look older so i moved on to these nicer oem ones and while i was at it i also changed the fog lights with the help of my friends so i didn't have to pay for labor but the lights were 890 and the fog lights were like what 111 so it was over a thousand dollars for this upgrade but i think the car looks great so no regrets another thing that i did was change the um the tinting, I actually removed it because I don't like tinted windows. I just like this crisp look of clean windows. And I had it removed for $250, I believe. And the reason why I paid is because I've done it in the past and it's a pain in the neck trying to remove the tinting of the back window because you don't want to damage the defroster. So I paid somebody to do it and that was money well spent. And let me show you while I'm back here, I'll show you this uh, nasty scratches from somebody keying the car. They bothered me a lot, so I've been thinking about repainting. Um, I'll go over in detail a little bit later. 
I also had other miscellaneous expenses such as new floor mats, a sun visor for 91, the floor mats were 180, and uh, oil changes for about $200, two of them. So as you can see, I doubled what I originally spent on the car and miscellaneous expenses, some needed, some unnecessary, and some others just because of personal taste. Let's go with what was needed. The smog verification, the registration, the tires, the starter, the power steering pump, and two oil changes. Those expenses run me at about $2,500. Now let's talk about what I spent just on personal taste, the floor mats, the tin removal, the lights, and stuff like that. That was about $1,625. So to be clear, that was money that I spent by choice, but the car would have been driving exactly the same without them. And now, Money spent for being dumb, a battery and an alternator. That was $395, almost $400. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something. And um, I suspect that my math could be wrong. But at the end of the day, I spent almost $9,000 on this seemingly cheap luxury car. Not only that, I also think of the numerous times that I had to take the car to the mechanic or all the days off that I've spent working on the car as well. But let's be positive. I know that I cannot get all of my money back. I think I'm sitting on maybe a solid six to $7,000 asset. Granted, nothing else breaks down on the car. Luckily, the drivetrain and major components seem to be pretty healthy for now. But with an old car, there's no warranty. So at any point I could have catastrophic failure and this will turn into a very expensive paperweight. And like I show you that latest leak may run me at a few hundred even a couple of thousand dollars. No regrets though, as for the last six months, the car has been tremendously reliable. It hasn't left me stranded once. I've driven it to Texas and back, and I put it to work every weekend when we go on trips and the car continues to deliver a very pleasant driving experience. What is next? Again, I hope my wife is not watching this video, but I think I might have it repainted. It all depends on how much longer I plan to keep it. The body is straight, but the clear coat, like I showed you, is done. So maybe a respray will make the car look a lot nicer. Is it worth the expense? I want to think that it does. I mean, the average price of a new car back in 2022 was $49,000. That's when I bought this one. So for that in California, you have to pay about shy of $4,000 on sales tax alone. Not to mention financing the car because I don't have the money to make such a purchase. And even if I try to be conservative in my argument, bringing it down to a comparable car today in both size and features, a new Acura Integra will run me at about $33,000 to start. That will be about $2,600 in down payment just to cover the sales tax. Yes, for the first six months, this car has been tremendously expensive to own, but as the time passes, and of course, if it continues to be reliable, it will prove itself to be cheaper to own than the average new car, and it will do exactly the same thing, take me from point A to point B. And I wanna hear from you. What do you think about my approach to this car? Um, spending money to make it look like it left the showroom or will you spend the money just customizing it to make it look unique and to your liking perhaps neither and just spend absolutely essential money on maintenance until the wheels fall off thank you for watching and as always don't forget to subscribe it helps my channel grow i'll see you next time